Tonight, season two of Aeriscope's Horrified comes to its conclusion. Over the past 22 weeks, we've undergone our own twisted version of therapy together by sharing laughs, tears, scares, and of course, lots and lots of bodily fluids. But before we say farewell, we have one final and very important story to share. On September 11th, 2001, our world forever changed. Journalist and producer Steve Barton was among the thousands who suffered incomprehensible loss on 9-11. But tonight, closing out our season, he shares a story of hope in the very face of that horrific tragedy. In these trying times, it's important to remember that we can overcome anything by sharing with each other, by listening to each other, by inspiring each other, by loving each other, and most of all, by helping each other remember how to laugh, especially when you're feeling horrified. On behalf of Aeriscope Pictures and our entire cast and crew, I'm Corey English. Good night and keep laughing. We've got this. So it was September, and it was like one of the nicest mornings I could ever remember. I remember I was on my way to work, and as I was going to the train station in New York, I said to myself, wow, I really wish that I didn't have to go to work today because it's, it's just gorgeous out. I just wanted to go to the beach and hang out and relax and whatever. But, you know, part of the workforce, so got on the train and uh, had my, at that time, Bruce Campbell book and it was If Chins Could Kill or something like that. And I was reading it, and whenever I was on the train into Manhattan, there was the Manhattan Bridge we had across. It was on the Q line. So it was this really scenic, picturesque view. And I would always get out of my seat and go to the door just to enjoy it, because it's one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen, is the New York skyline. And I remember just as uh, I was getting to the door to watch it, I looked and I said, wow, that plane is kind of low. I mean, it's really low. And the next thing you knew, it hit one of those towers. And uh, it was like a collective hush, like a, or not even a hush, just a gasp and then a hush, you know? And we had gotten off the train where we had to go off. Obviously, we thought it was a horrible, horrible accident, and next thing you know, the second plane hit. And that's when it became apparent that uh, this wasn't a horrible accident. This was something horrible on a completely different, profound level. And uh, I'll never forget standing there and just watching and seeing people literally jump to their death because they were there forever in the fires. They were getting close, and you don't forget that, man. It's something like that that really, I think when, when you're horrified by something, when you're, you're truly horrified, it's by things that you can't unsee. And this was one of those moments that uh, I'll never unsee. It became apparent that it was time to get out of the city and the subways were all stopped, the buses were all stopped, so we had to literally walk over the Williamsburg Bridge, and as we were crossing the bridge, the buildings came down. And then somebody said that uh, there might be a bomb on the bridge, and so everybody started collectively running. And in my head, I'm like saying goodbye to people, going, wow, is this it? 
it's raining paper. I mean, it's, it was like snow. I don't know if it was ash. I don't know if it was paper and ash. It was both. And we started getting covered with debris. And I was horrified. I was completely, totally horrified. But within that horror, something I never expected happened. As soon as it got at its worst, people started uh, getting at their best. And at that moment, it didn't matter if you were black, white, Hispanic, guy, girl, gay, whatever. Everybody was just helping each other and helping each other get home. It's funny how something so horrible can also bring out the best in people. And even though I was horrified, I've never been more hopeful.